think I'm looking at Steve's notes from a week ago. That could work. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> Funny. Although Mr. Lassard just gave me a good idea for what I perhaps should do with my own notes. Oh well. Oh well. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity, which you didn't know you gave me. <laughs> Today's reading that we just heard from Steve was from 2 Timothy verses 3.10 to 4.8. The author was the Apostle Paul. He wrote these words from Rome where he was in prison for the second time and where he would soon die as a martyr. Paul was writing to Timothy, head of the church of Ephesus. The introduction to 2 Timothy in my Bible tells me that many of Paul's supporters, perhaps sensing the hopelessness of his situation, had abandoned him in prison. Time hung very heavy for Paul, who was suffering both physically and emotionally. His difficult circumstances, concern for the churches he had begun, and not least of all his love for Timothy, spurred him to write these words. In verse 4-2, Paul exhorts Timothy to preach the word, be prepared in and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. And a couple verses later, verse 5, Paul adds, keep your head in all situations, do the work of the evangelist, and discharge all of the duties of your ministry. Let me emphasize again just a couple of those phrases. Preach the word, encourage with careful instruction, do the work of the evangelist, and discharge all the duties of your ministry. Paul wrote those words to Timothy roughly 1950 years ago. Are they relevant today? And are they relevant to Pilgrim Lutheran Church in 2016? Well, in 2011, the Congregational Board completed about 18 months of work work, that resulted in a single-page document entitled Pilgrim Lutheran Church 2020 Vision and Purpose. Fast forward five years to August 2016 to today. And we find that the vision statement contained in that document identified four core values, vibrant worship, Bible-centered growth in teaching, nurturing congregational care, and intentional outreach and evangelism. And hopefully, those all sound pretty familiar to you, and would, I'm pretty confident, sound very familiar to both Paul and Timothy as well. Later this month, the board and the staff will be meeting together for several hours, And I'm sure part of that day will be spent revisiting those four core values. We'll decide if any of those need to be changed a little bit, perhaps modified. But I rather suspect that we'll reaffirm those values with or without some minor tweaking. After all, vibrant worship, Bible-centered growth and teaching, nurturing congregational care, and intentional outreach and evangelism or what we've been about here at Pilgrim for the past several years. Following that review with the board, the staff will be setting their goals for the year ahead and sharing those with the board this fall. I suspect that if Paul were here, he would be pleased with these efforts. But the staff and the board will never be successful in carrying out those goals if they try to do them alone. There's simply too much to be done. And no small subgroup of the congregation has the energy or the resources or the wisdom that are possessed by the larger congregation. In my written year-end report to you last June, I wrote that Jesus calls all of us in John 8, 31, 32, to be his disciples. I went on to say that the term disciple comes from the Latin word meaning one who learns by doing. As we strive to be the disciples of Jesus, we literally need, each of us individually and all of us collectively, to be doing the work of the church. 
Our walk with Christ is not a spectator sport. We cannot do it passively from the sidelines as if we were watching a sporting event or viewing a play. No, I'm quite sure that what Jesus intended as he called on us to be his disciples is that we be actively, passionately, fully involved in the work of the church and in the pursuit of our relationship with him. The two simply go hand in hand. So I will close with what I will call a prayer for Pilgrim Lutheran Church and for each of us as well, which really is simply the repeating of a few words from a favorite hymn. I know you'll recognize this. Just a closer walk with thee, precious Savior, still my plea, daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in a short prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, help me get this right so you will may be done. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, about a week ago, Pastor Steve emailed me and said, boy, I have an opportunity for you. (laughs) And as I read it, it said, consider you or Paul on the congregation as Timothy. And I thought he must have meant I should... He was going to send this to somebody else. So I ignored the problem. <laughs> and then he called me. And here I am. Okay. So the, the, uh, the prompt here was to consider that I'm Paul and you're Timothy. And I guess what you have to know about that is Paul is arguably the wisest guy in the Bible. He is the primary author for a third of the New Testament. And I'm no Paul. So... I'm going to change the prompt. I'm going to kind of follow Steve's lead here and take the prompt and throw it away and do something different. <laughs> I'm going to point out that I'm 42 years old and I simply have no standing to, to minister to a congregation like this, certainly not a congregation that has a, a, the demographics this congregation has. So what I'm going to do is take just a few moments and talk to you about why my family chose to be members of Pilgrim. Oh, okay. um, mm-hmm. and, and my hope is that... Uh, you'll kind of get a sense for the things at least my family thinks you guys are doing right. On our first day, we, uh, we arrived at 1045 for the 11 o'clock service. Service was at 930. Um, so you guys were going out as we were coming in. <laughs> so we were embarrassed. And uh, a group of folks just kind of grabbed us and they sat us down. They recognized we were new. And, and they just talked. And we just talked for an hour and a half. Now, my family is not the most conversational group in the world. So it was kind of awkward to have this group of non-conversational people and this group of non-conversational people trying to have a conversation. But it was clear that there was an effort there to make us feel welcome. And, and that was the first thing that really, that really resonated with us, was how friendly the congregation was. Um, it was very personal. It wasn't pushy. Uh, we certainly noticed that the, the congregation is multi-generational. That's something my family really looked for we want to spend time with folks our own age, but we want to draw on some of the wisdom from, from folks who have been around longer than we have. And it's really a kid-friendly environment. So even with the, the different generations, it's, it's nice to be in a place where the kids are allowed to be kids and, and they don't feel uncomfortable. We really appreciated that. It's very clear that there's a good balance of fun and purpose. I mean, sometimes you drive by and there's a group of people watching a movie projected against the side of the screen. Other times you drive by at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and the parking lot's full. And it's just, it seems to be a good balance of, of fun with purpose. But most importantly, it's very clear to my family that it's, it's a very Bible-centered church. We, we've been places where they read the scripture and then they go on to this really interesting and passionate sermon, but it's not as Bible-centered as we are here, and I, and I truly appreciate that. Um, so as, as I close here, I'm going to say those are the reasons we chose to stay, but, but the main thing that brought us in is, it's kind of weird, uh, we live close by, and, and we drive, drive past the church <laughs> a lot, and we noticed that compared to the other churches we drive past, 
the parking lot here is always full. Mm -hmm. There's always something happening. Now, not all of it is stuff that I'm interested in, um, but there's always something happening. And that's what made us say, hey, we'd like to be part of that group and see what that group's about. Mm -hmm. So so with that having been said, um, I wanted to say thank you for for welcoming my family and, uh, and, and keep it up because my family is certainly benefiting from that. That's all I got. Amen. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Oh. 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 oh, yeah. I feel like this is, does this go down? Where's her filters? As tall as pastor, so I'll stand over this way. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So, um, um, as most of you got emailed, um, we went into staff meeting last week, and Pastor says, okay, so somebody has to talk, and it needs to be a female. Um, well, there's only two of us here from staff <laughs> today. So, Rochelle was already doing a bunch of the other stuff. So, I felt called <laughs> to be the one that stood up and did this. So, I was asked to address a certain topic. So... In our life, we have so many fast-paced things. We have Twitter, we have text messaging, we have Snapchat, and we have emails. And um, a few years back, my niece said to me, if I don't answer a text in five minutes, I'm being rude. And I said to her, gosh, that just seems so quick. That seems so fast. And is our world really in a fast pace of five minutes? Well, then she got a job. And she realized you can't always answer in five minutes. So yesterday I received a letter from our condo association. And it was a letter that was very demanding, saying that we need to follow the rules. I quickly sent off, because it's the association my brothers and I both belong to, all belong to. And I sent off a letter to all my brothers. And I said, hey, you know, the condo association wants us to watch how we're doing our checkout. My niece immediately texted back or sent an email back, and she said, she said, did I check out wrong? I always look at the list. I always make sure it's right. Very defensive, very, very feeling, very attacked. Um, my other brother said, well, was this a letter that went out to everybody? And I said, my answer back was, yeah, I think it was a bit dramatic, but here's a copy of the letter. So I sent it off to everyone along with the checkout procedure. In the end, my lawyer brother came up with, oh, I see, they used a sledgehammer when a surgical knife would have worked. (laughs) So sometimes we use a sledgehammer (laughs) to say what we want to say when it's something that could be done with precision. This seems to encompass us, this fast pace. We reply easily with a snark with a snarky reply, with a snide remark. We come back with a message that maybe isn't considering, can this hurt somebody or will this discourage somebody? Mm -hmm. We impose our views and our feelings quickly without stopping to think, without opening our hearts without praying, Mm -hmm. without asking God. My daughter Rachel is a social worker, and when I told her I had to do the sermon and that I was going to use a theme of filters, she came up with this. She says, my boss has this great theory on filters. He says that there, there are three filters. The first filter is, is it truthful? Mm -hmm. The second filter, is it necessary? Mm -hmm. And the third filter, is it kind? But her manager continued to talk a bit more, and he said, the really difficult one is, is it truthful? Because your truth may not be my truth, and my truth may not be someone else's truth. Paul tells us in Timothy 2, to keep our heart in all situations, 
to do the work of an evangelist. Maybe we should consider prayerful path to conversation. And that's conversation in the written word or conversation in our verbal word. When we want to make a snide remark or answer back a quick tweet or answer back with an email that's maybe snarky, maybe we should consider something. And since I'm a teacher, I have a prop because kids learn with props. <laughs> this is my filter. So I'd like you to consider a prayer filter. Uh-huh. A prayer filter will help us filter through human reaction, angry words, harsh opinion, unkind words. Here is your prayer filter. I have them in here. I'm going to pass them out to you. So each of you is going to get a filter that you can decorate, that you can place somewhere on your wall, on your mirror, somewhere that it reminds you that relationships are fragile. Handle them with prayer. Mm -hmm. Thank you.